Great to have you along for the ride. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Really glad to have this guy on. You probably saw him on stage with the former president the other day. It's Max Miller. He's running for District 16 Republican out of the great state of Ohio. Max, how you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on, Joe. Uh, good, it's good to see you, brother. Really glad to have you on. Had to be kind of a thrill. There's, there's Trump, who I've interviewed like eight times, and every time I'm anywhere near the guy, you, see, you get this electricity, and he's calling you up, and you said a few words, and you get out of there. But, I mean, it's got to be pretty awesome that, that you've got the backing of of the king, basically, of the Republican Party right now. That's right. President Trump is still the leader of the Republican Party. And for those who haven't recognized it yet, man, do they have a long way to go because it's going to root awakening for them come primary time next year. But it was the greatest honor of my lifetime standing beside President Trump on that stage. No one has fought harder for the American people than that man in President Trump, hands down. Everything that he was able to accomplish in his four years Arguably, well, actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. What he accomplished in four years as president, no other president has done in two terms. Right. And it's, it's a bold statement because many people say, yeah, what about Ronald Reagan? But even the Heritage Foundation says that Donald Trump was more conservative and got more done than Reagan did. Uh, and, and that's a big, big, bold statement. So when you get the actual endorsement from former President Trump, that's a really big deal. He's very, very picky. How did it happen? Did, does he call you and say, OK, Max, you're my guy? How does that go down? I was able to establish a very, very close personal relationship with President Trump over the past five and a half years that I've known him. And he knew throughout that time that I always had his back. I never wavered. I always did everything he asked me to do. And I did it to the best of my ability and executed on the highest level possible on the largest stage imaginable that anyone's ever you know, conceived of. So, you know, when I started the conversations with him, he knew this. He recognized it. And he said to me, he said, you know, you've always told me the truth. You've never lied to me. You've always had my back, and I'm going to do the same for you. And him and I have had a really great personal relationship aside from work, and he truly is the best boss, mentor, and teacher that I've ever had. What people don't know about the guy, and I found this to be true, is that he's a really nice guy. He just is a nice guy, but you're right. Trusting, loyalty, don't lie to me, those things are are of ultimate importance. And and through the years, when he was just Donald Trump, you know, the, the entrepreneur, not just, but when he was the entrepreneur and the successful American, everybody wanted a piece of him. As soon as he announced that he was going to be a candidate for president, suddenly he saw where the loyalty was, where the trust was. And there were a lot of people who kissed up and said, yeah, I'm on the right, support my campaign. Mitt Romney is a great example. Mitt Romney took Donald Trump's money happily and then complained about him ever since. And then he sat down for dinner where he thought he would be the secretary of state and then and then tried to impeach him a couple of times. So uh, it, that really is the thing, isn't it? When, when people talk about loyalty in Donald Trump, they oftentimes bring up Jim Comey and, and makes loyalty a bad thing. Loyalty is not bad in politics, is it? No, not at all. You know, it's funny. My father tells me this all the time. He's a small business owner and a hat manufacturer in Cleveland, Ohio. And he said, you know what, Max? If I'm doing business with somebody and they're not loyal – How do you think that I'm going to treat them? He said, why should business be any different than politics? And that's exactly what this country needed in President Donald J. Trump. We elected a fighter, a businessman to run this country, and he did so just like that. So there's no difference. And anyone who says, you know, oh, Donald Trump, he doesn't like anyone who's not loyal. Well, I got to tell you, I don't know too many successful people in the private sector that if you're not loyal to them, how they're going to treat you. It'll be the exact same. So, you know, Politics, in some regards, is no different than business as to where loyalty is one of the top things, if not the top thing, that they recognize and need and want in some in an individual in general. The website is VoteMaxMiller.com. VoteMaxMiller.com. It is Max Miller. He's running for District 16 Republican out of the great state of Ohio. Uh, I can't help but notice that you seem to be a pretty young guy. And, and, and that's going to work in your favor, I think. People are so tired of seeing the old school, the old guard, uh, the Mitch McConnells of the world just sort of getting along and not really standing for what they said they would stand for. First of all, if you don't mind, how old are you? And do you think that that's going to work in your favor? I do. I'm 32 years old. And by the time I get elected, I'll be 34, which is the same age that Anthony Gonzalez, I should say, turncoat Tony was when he got elected. Uh, And, you know, his his thin resume of experience of going from a football player, then working in big tech in California, then getting recruited to run for office and never really returning home to the 16th district as he resides in a multi-million dollar home in Washington, D.C. These are the things that we're going up against. Uh, You know, so, you know, 32. But I am a fighter. President Trump recognizes that. He knows that I have the backbone to stand up for the American people. And no matter what, I will always put my constituents' interests above my own. And that's what this should be about. 
Washington, D.C. and politics in general should be a place where you do your time, you serve your country, and then you get the heck out. And someone like Anthony Gonzalez, he would stay there forever if this didn't happen. He was already looking at a Senate run right after the impeachment vote, which right. should tell you all you need to know right. about the guy is that he's not interested in what his constituents want or their interests. He's interested in how he can elevate his own platform and take care of, number one, kind of the big guy like Joe Biden and Anthony Gonzalez. He's all about number one, Anthony. I'm all about the people. And there's the binary choice. It is uh, Max Miller. Max Miller is running for uh, for the, the District 16 Republican seat that's held by Anthony Gonzalez right now. Uh, w- so this is what I see as the duopoly in our politics in America right now. The duopoly is actually very simple. Either you're going after a Democrat seat to get the House back for Republicans, or you're trying to get somebody out who is who is too far left or is too much of a rhino Republican, or as you said, somebody who might end up staying in that seat forever, get comfortable, and not really do the work of the people. So, so maybe you can explain to me what district 16 looks like now i know redistricting is coming up and you're not really sure what it's going to end up looking like but if i said what's a typical voter in district 16 is it a blue collar person is it a white collar person is it a family who is it it's more of a blue collar worker i mean but we have everyone in the 16th district and it's a large spectrum but it really is the blue collar worker and the policies that president trump was able to put forward and actually accomplished within his four years, helped every single one of them. And in regards to redistricting, right now, as we see the 16th district, it's an R plus eight, which you win the primary, you're more than likely gonna win the seat. I look at redistricting as an advantage to myself. Why? Because look, no one even knew who Anthony Gonzalez was other than a washed up NFL football player who lasted three years. Now, the liberal left and the media, they glorify him. They make him like some martyr, right? Because he took this ridiculous vote to impeach a private citizen. Right. So he's going to go ahead and court a whole batch of new voters that already know who he is, that they already know that he turned his back on the people. And once you do it once, Joe, you know you're going to do it again. I mean, that's how people are built. Once you go ahead and you do that, he's going to do it again. And what happens, I mean, if it's another major piece of legislation, not to mention he already voted for amnesty for a couple million illegal immigrants for the new farm bill that they passed. Right. Uh, I believe it was about a month and a half ago. That is not who the constituents of the 16th district voted for. That's not a true Republican. So did he lie to the voters, Max? When he ran, did he say he would be a Trump Republican or he would be a, a real conservative? You can't really vote to impeach the guy when there was nothing impeachable there. I mean, why does he make that vote? He didn't do it to appease his voters, I would guess. He did it to appease the other side of the aisle, maybe to get more favor in the House. T- tell me what you think he did in getting that seat. And are people in District 16 disappointed in what this guy's done? They're unbelievably disappointed. But to go back a little bit earlier into your question, Anthony did this because he thought he was going to be on the right side of history. He thought that this somehow was going to elevate his platform and he bet against somebody who you never bet against again. And that is Donald J. Trump, right? So he thought that this is somehow going to elevate his platform, take him to the next level of politics. And the constituents of the 16th district have rebuked him. And so is the state of Ohio as they already censured him. And then they asked for his resignation. I mean, there couldn't be a stronger message than the people of the 16th district have sent to Mr. Gonzalez or the state party. I mean, that is as harsh as it can get. And I I just want to go back real quick. Anthony went on the record and there was radio interviews of him saying this, that he wanted the Democrats to censure President Trump. Well, I have to ask you one question, Mr. Gonzalez. You wanted them to censure President Trump. But then when they brought the impeachment vote to the floor, you went ahead and you voted to impeach him. Why? He claimed moral conscience. I claim once again, all about the big guy, all about number one in Anthony and not about the people and how far that was going to take him to the next level. Go to uh, votemaxmiller.com, votemaxmiller.com. Generally speaking, you get the endorsement from Donald Trump. It's a really, really good thing, but now you're on the list. Now the left is after you. What has the response been by the enemy, by the other side? Has Gonzalez commented? He's not necessarily on the political left, but he's certainly more left of, of you, of me, of, of Trump. Uh, what has the reaction been and have Democrats now attacked you? Democrats have attacked me, and I know that uh, you know Anthony is slow uh, releasing Oppo, and that's fine. What they're going to do is they're going to run a smear campaign against me. They're going to go ahead and get really, really personal and nasty as to where I'm going to focus in on his votes, as to where he voted to keep troops in Syria, voted you know for illegal, oh, sorry, for amnesty for the farm workers bill, right. voted to impeach right. President Donald J. Trump. I mean, the list goes on and on. Voted for the January 6th commission. I mean. It's continuous. The man votes with Nancy Pelosi 38% of the time and votes with AOC over 40% of the time. 
I mean, that I mean, the binary choice couldn't be any more clear to the constituents of the 16th district is that you have a man who actually took President Trump's endorsement when he ran and then all of a sudden decided to distance himself away because he thought that that somehow is going to benefit him. And he's going to now pay the ultimate price for it come next primary time next year. So what does the next year and a half look like for you? How intense does this get? And do you think that he's going to, to debate you? Because, again, you're talking about primarying somebody. I guess maybe the first question should be, when is the primary? Is it in January, February next year? When is it? Right now it's in May, and due to redistricting, it could get tied up in litigation, and it could get pushed until a little bit later. But right now it's slated for May. And, you know, if Anthony wants to have a debate, as well, you know, this is what I say. Well, when you know, you're a candidate and you're qualified, we'll get to that point. And sure, I'm sure we'll engage in that uh, joyful banter that him and I will go back and forth. But look, once again, he is not who the, the, the constituents of the 16th district put in office to represent him. Right. I mean, the man rarely comes home. Uh, so, you know, the binary choice is there. The constituents feel it. And I want to say I know that I'm endorsed by the greatest president this country has ever had, Donald J. Trump. But that's not enough, Joe. I need to go out. I need to go to all these events. I need to establish a great rapport with the voters of the 16th district and earn their trust. And what I want them to know is that I don't need to be the anointed one just because I have the president's endorsement. I want you to vote for me and believe in me because I will carry out the work that they want done in Congress and not worry about myself. That is my only motivation for running for Congress is to literally serve the people. I've dedicated my entire life to public service. And I know, you know, Anthony hates to bring this up and so did the liberal left, but I served my country proud in the Marine Corps reserves for six years, right? And then after that, I dedicated my life to public service in the federal government. And I ended up doing things on a very high level and handling negotiations for the president, not only domestically, but overseas. And these are the things that they're never going to bring to light, and they're only going to focus on the bad. And I just got to tell you, the voters are a lot smarter than you think, Anthony, because when they side with me, it's going to be in an overwhelming fashion. And then we're going to get you out of D.C. and then probably back to California or back to Ohio or wherever it is that you're going to want to live. But it certainly won't be you in Congress. Is the left, you know, doing this going, oh, man. This is going to be pretty contentious on the right. We might be able to slip in here and grab this seat. Are they happy about the challenge, Republican on Republican? I feel I'm sure they're happy about it, but this is just cute fodder and great talking points that they love to push out because the Democrats are really good at messaging. But the fact is, when you look at the demographic makeup of the district, it's overwhelmingly Republican. And then even through redistricting and some of the maps that have been floated around, it just gets stronger. So they, you know, they can take their best shot at me, their best crack at me and bring up whatever they would like. Unfortunately for them, I'm never going to give up and I'm going to fight to the very, very end, to the bitter end. And I'll tell you right now, with the support that we just got in this second quarter and raising over $550,000, it's overwhelming. There's no corporate PAC money in there. There's no nothing. They're all individual donors. And that is what is so strong about this campaign. And I'll be interested I'll be interested to see Anthony's numbers because the first quarter he had two hundred and ninety six thousand dollars from corporate PACs. So no strings attached here. Nothing's tied here. I just have the people and the people's president and Donald J. Trump. And he's got the corporate PACs and he's got the swamp. Anthony Gonzalez is hoping that the swamp saves him in his campaign. That's what he's relying upon. So once again, I wish him all the luck in the world. He's going to need it. Because he's going up against the Trump and the Trump machine. And trust me, you know, he's slow releasing all this oppo. You know, we don't you know, we don't always play fair either. And we're going to go right after him. I got you. Vote MaxMiller.com. Vote MaxMiller.com. I appreciate you, Max. We're back after this in the Joe Pag Show.